what is human environment interaction in geography? The human environment interaction definition is the way humans interact with their surroundings or ecosystem. It's the way they interact with the earth and its environment and make changes to that environment. At the same time, the environment can have an impact on humans. The environment can change what we eat, wear, build, or do in everyday life. So the environment impacts us and we impact the environment. If I were to define human environment interaction in a sentence, it would be the way that humans interact with and modify their environment. All right, let's take a closer look. What are three ways humans interact with the environment? Well, first, humans depend on the environment. So one way, that's the food that we eat, right? So we need to, uh, ha we need the soil to get in the earth to give us food. It needs to be fertile and clean, and that way we can have crops that grow. We also need the weather to cooperate because we need rain many times to uh, grow crops and we need the climate to be the right climate so that crops will grow and not die. If it's too hot or too cold, it can kill crops, right? And there's also natural disasters, things like hurricanes, volcanoes, floods, drought, all of these can impact us and they are uncontrollable events. All right, second thing is humans adapt to the environment. Okay, so generally the environment will change where humans will tend to live and where they will build structures, right? So people don't typically go and live in Antarctica because it's just too cold, right? And there's some areas of geography that people really can't build, uh, can't build homes on, you know, like uh, marshlands and uh, if there was like a sinkhole, for example, right? We can't really build stuff over water. Well, we could, it, it's just, it's more difficult, right? And in ancient times, um, that was even more of an impact and, and, and really helped to decide where humans would actually live. All right. So humans will, once they decide to live in a certain environment, they will adapt to that environment, right? So people who are living near fish, uh, I'm sorry, near coastways and water will fish. They are still living by fish and they'll tend to fish and you'll see those type of communities will eat more fish and they'll be like fishing societies. You see that over in like uh, Sweden and stuff. So uh, it'll change the dietary habits of the people based on what the crops produce in that region or and it'll change the things that the type of clothes that is that people wear so if it's a colder environment people will wear heavier clothes and more clothes and if it's a hotter warmer climate they'll wear less clothes right and also genetically humans will adapt and pass different traits on to their offspring based on the environment it will slowly change the genetic traits of people over time. All right. Uh, Native Americans were great examples of adapting to the environment and eating foods around them. They would wear skins from the animals in the environment in order to stay warm during cold winter months. All right. Humans modify and change the environment. Humans will modify the environment in order to survive or to get what they might desire. Typically, these have ended up being negative impacts on the environment. If environmental conditions are favorable and land is buildable, then humans might decide to build homes or dwellings or maybe even cities or strip malls and businesses. Sometimes 
there must be some kind of modification to the land in order to build the structures. For example, maybe cutting down trees or leveling out the ground in order to build buildings. Another environmental factor that causes humans to build structures are water sources, right? Because we need water to live. So humans will build dams in order to change the flow of water from, for one reason or another. You got the Hoover Dam, for example. They might need to stop water from flowing or to or flooding a particular area where people are living. Uh, humans might need to have water go from one place to another. The Romans built aqueducts for this reason. Also, humans pave roads, highways, and railroads for transportation. All of that requires modifying the environment. Anytime we build a road, that's modifying the environment, right? Also, just the, the cars and vehicles driving down the roads, uh, they might scare away wildlife that naturally lived in the area. They might even hurt or kill animal wildlife that could be hit by cars. All right, humans use the environment for natural resources and might change the environment to get these resources. One big example is the use of drilling. Humans drill for oil to be used as an energy source. The problem is this is a huge negative impact on the environment. Oil can be spilled into the ocean while drilling and cause of huge negative impact on the environment. Destroying and contaminating sea life and sea food. Also, the burning of oil to power vehicles and other machinery is one of the biggest pollutants that the Earth faces. The act of drilling itself causes methane gas to be released into the atmosphere, leading to climate change. All right, so we've got human-environment interaction in geography. There are five themes of geography. Location, place, and human-environment interaction is the third theme. The fourth is movement, and the fifth is region. As we said before, human-environment interaction describes how the land is adapted to and modified by humans. Okay, examples of human-environment interaction in geography. The use of natural resources. Humans use natural resources for everyday life. Humans need food and water from the environment in order to survive. Natural resources such as wood, metal, oil, diamonds, gold, and other resources are also used for human survival and advancement. Wood might be needed to build fires and cook food, for example. The problem is that humans can overuse resources, and some of these are non-renewable, such as fossil fuels. Also, the use of resources, such as oil, leads to pollution and climate change. The mining of some minerals might destroy millions of acres of land in the extraction process and cause the leaking of toxins into areas nearby. All of these are big negative impacts on the environment and the sustainability of the earth for future generations, as well as having negative effects on the health of nearby people who are exposed to these practices. All right, the next one is the building and expansion of cities and roads. We talked about this before. Uh, the building of homes, cities, and businesses sometimes require the use of cutting down trees and altering the land and environment. This also creates spaces where animals and plants can no longer live. This is especially true in bigger urban cities, such as New York City, where so much has been covered with cement and barely any natural green space exists anymore. This is not only destructive for the environment and animals, but it can also take a mental toll and found that green spaces and water could have a positive impact on mental health for people. Roads also run through natural habitats and can alter the environment and scare away or hurt animals. Also, the exhaust caused by cars traveling on these roads has a huge negative impact on the environment. Flying as well in airplanes as a means of transportation produces a lot of emissions. The emissions come from the airplanes, just like they come from cars. All right, the next example is pollution. Cars and factories all create pollution and toxic chemicals that are harmful to our health in the environment and ozone layer. One of the biggest causes for concern is carbon emissions. Transportation contributes to a third of greenhouse emissions and is responsible for killing around 800,000 people per year. And I have a link to human environment interaction in Mexico if you would like to 
look specifically at this topic in Mexico or see examples there. Deforestation is the next example. The earth's forests are being cut down at alarming rate. This is usually for buildings and industrial equipment or the raising of livestock for animal food or products. This is one reason it helps to eat a whole food plant-based diet, which lowers the demand for animal foods and minimizes the use of land for raising livestock. This deforestation leads to the extinction of certain species of animals. Also, trees are useful in keeping the air clean and improving the health of the environment. The less trees left, the less they are able to improve the climate. Deforestation also contributes to soil erosion. When trees are chopped down, the soil below is exposed and easily washed away by the rain. Next example, drilling for oil. Drilling for oil releases methane gases which contribute to climate change. Also, oil spills can happen and are massively disruptive to the environment, killing animals and wildlife. Next example, using up of water resources. Accessible and clean water is running out and being used up and being unevenly distributed throughout the planet. It's one of the problems in Mexico too, clean water. Next example, litter and trash. Waste from trash, litter, and plastics can get into oceans and natural environments and harm animals. Next example is boats. The increased use of, of boats by humans on the water can have a negative impact on ocean life. The next example is illegal hunting and poaching. Illegal hunting and poaching, especially excessively and for sport, can contribute to the extinction of certain breeds of animals. <laughs> Now we'll get into some positive human environment interaction examples. And I actually have a post on that on the website, which will go into all of these in more detail. I'll leave a link to that too. And I will try to make a future video with a link to that. Okay, do we have positive human environment interaction? We do. Some examples of these might be ways, these are ways we can minimize the negative effects or neutralize any effects we have as humans on the environment. And that's first one's renewable energy sources. By using renewable energy sources such as solar power and wind, we don't need to use unrenewable and environmental damaging energy sources such as oil and fossil fuels. Recycling. Recycling helps to prevent waste from trash in the environment as well as minimizing the need for resources just such as plastics. Building national parks, preserving areas of nature is a great practice for the environment. Unfortunately, this is not practiced as much in underdeveloped countries for the time being. The building of green spaces. Some cities work to build new green spaces, which are areas of trees or nature for residents to enjoy. And the last example is water management and reuse. Managing water Usage can play a part in helping to conserve water sources. Also, the use of rainwater harvesters can help as well. And there's a link to positive human environment interaction examples. I believe I have actually more in that post, more examples than what I just covered. Uh, ways you can help the human environment interaction. Uh, one way is eating little or no meat and animal foods. That helps to support the environment, either, either being vegan, vegetarian, or eating a plant-based diet with little or no meat. Many practices such as factory farming and raising of livestock for animal foods contributes to the deterioration of the environment. Practicing minimalism. Minimalism is the idea of living within your means and creating as little waste as possible. This could mean living in smaller house or space, using less electricity, having less food waste, etc. By the way, in America, our waste is just, is just tremendous. We just create so much waste every day, so much garbage per person. Walking, riding a bike, taking the bus, or carpooling is another good example. By walking, riding a bike, taking the bus, or carpooling, whenever you travel, you can minimize pollution, and it'll decrease the demand for gas. All right, you can also invest in energy-efficient cars and renewable energy. If you do need a car, it's best to invest in a more energy efficient car that has less emissions and uses less gas, like the Toyota Prius or an electric car. Also, you might look into renewable energy for your home, such as solar power, if it's offered where you live. <laughs>